Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. Today we're going to be talking about code cleanup inside of Visual Studio. But before we get into it, I just want to ask you like and subscribe. That would be great. As everyone tells you, it's good for the channel. Add any comments below the description. I try to get back with people as fast as possible. That's your best way of getting a hold of me. And of course, you can visit my website as well. We don't have a sponsor per se, but we do have me as a sponsor. So I have a short message for you. Maybe it's time for an expert. I provide training, coaching, and software development. With nearly 40 years of experience, see how I can help you. So I think as developers, we often struggle with the idea of how good our code is. There's all sorts of tools that allow you to do different things to improve your code using tools like Refactor or other tools like our inside Visual Studio or command line tools. They can all help you figure out how good your code is and really clean it in a way to make it all very cohesive. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's get started. I'm in Visual Studio. Big surprise. This project needs a little love. It has some inconsistent naming rules, has some odd spacing and namespace formats, even has some issues with some inconsistent indention. And I'd like to have a way to do this automatically. And as most of you know, you could go format each of these pages. Let's take a look at some tools that are built in that can really help you. So I'm going to start simple. And over in Tools, Options, I'm going to come down here into Text Editor. And because I'm using C Sharp, I'm going to go here to the code style for C Sharp. And this has some really simple settings for how you want to set up a project. So this is going to define whether you don't prefer to use the this, whether you want to prefer predefined types. And you can go in here and it'll show you an example of what it would do if it changed. So if you prefer the framework type, you'll get those instead of those, right? These are all interesting rules that can be helpful. Using parentheses, expression like object initializers and collection initializers. And those are all things that Visual Studio allows you to set for all your projects. But we don't really want to be stuck in one. I'm a consultant. I work with a couple of different companies. We can also come down here into naming, and there's a few interesting name styles here. And we can see the interfaces. We're going to suggest begin with I. We're going to use Pascal case for types and Pascal case for noun field members. And then for private or internal fields, I've picked to prepend it with an underscore. You prepend it with an I. You force the it to be Pascal cased. And you can actually manage naming styles and create your own if you have something very specific that you need. But I'm going to leave that the way it is and go back to code style. And these settings are great if you're working in Visual Studio for really one type of project. If you're working on some open source projects plus your work project or your side project, all of those may have different requirements for these. And we'd like to have those styles follow the project instead of follow the machine. And we can do that with something called an editor config file. This can be placed at the root of the project or at the root of the solution. We're going to go ahead and generate it. And I'm going to put it here directly in the same directory as my solution. Go ahead and say OK. I'm just going to add it to our solution so that I have access to it. Now I put it at the solution level so it will affect both projects or any other projects that are created in that same folder. So I'm going to add an existing item. I'm going to get our editor config. When we open it, we can see that it's a whole different way of looking at the different styles. Now what's interesting here is that this visual editor that they're using here has a lot of settings that are specific to C Sharp. And we can see code style, naming style. These are all going to be very specific specific styles that Visual Studio knows about really well. But the reality is this is just a text file. So let me go open it up in um, source code editor. And we can see it has this very specific format name value pairs, and they have these special names in them. So if the regular editor doesn't have something, you may have to go down into the file and actually add these. You can see they're broken up by C sharp, and there's probably VB down here somewhere. And we're going to come back to that because we are actually going to uh, be adding one that's custom. Let's see how this editor configuration works. I'm going to go ahead and search settings, just say namespace. Now it's not going to show anything in white space, but it does have namespace declarations in code style, and I don't want them to be block scoped. I actually want them to be file scoped. The difference there is this is file scoped. 
So there's one per file. And if we look at something like address, we have a block scoped. Now I'd like it to be consistent. So if I create a new file here, because I've made that change, let's call this test.cs, I'd actually create it with those preferences in mind. But I'd like to apply this to the whole project. And let's go ahead and just create a quick constructor for this. And I'm gonna bring in I configuration. And when I refactor this, it's gonna give me some options. And notice that because we have that underscore before our fields, that it's gonna go ahead and by default, if I say a field, it's gonna go ahead and set that naming style when it generates this. And so you can see these styles are used in a number of different places, not just on new file, but if we come back here to our book context, you can see these little underlines, and that's because this naming violation is just a suggestion, not a warning, not an error. And you can set the severity. So here, only when refactoring do we want to look at it, make a suggestion, a warning, or an error. If we made it a warning, go back to our class and built this, you can see that we're actually getting a warning in our build that contains those rules. And so these rules can be very important. I only put it on refactor now because that's about the level that I'm worried about it. One of the other settings here I quite like is if you go into that file again and notice that it has these sections where it says apply these to C sharp files only. And there's going to be some other options later down for C sharp and VB for ones that are shared. And I'm going to go ahead and add it to the end of the file. This end of the file is for C sharp and VB apps. And you'll notice that when we set this, I want to be able to create a header at the top of every file. So if we do file header templates, then we can write copyright 2024 Wilder Mines LLC. And we can use the Unix line break backspace N to create new lines. So I'm going to say use at your own risk. Seriously, this code is risky. Let's go ahead and close that. And in this particular case, it doesn't take effect right away. So I'm actually going to restart Visual Studio. And we're back in here. If we go back to our test here and go to the top, you see this little question mark show up. One of the quick actions is add that file header. We can define these different things that we want to use for our coding style. And that's all great. But you probably came to this video to talk about code cleanup. All this was sort of a precursor to that. If you set these things up for Visual Studio, it becomes fairly easy. Let's go to our address book API, analyze and code cleanup. I'm going to first go to configure. There's two profiles that you can use for different aspects. So we come over here to analyze and go to our configure. We're going to see that it's going to have some default rules in here. And so these are basically ways to apply the way you set up the preferences for object creation, for object collections, removing unused parameters, format document. And you can see that there's a lot of these here. We're actually going to come back to some of these, but we're going to leave it like that. And let's go ahead and run this. So we go to analyze and code cleanup and pick run cleanup profile one, the one we were just looking at going to go through that project and it's going to make some changes and you see all these with check marks now actually have changes in them because I have this in source control and so if we look at these get changes let's go ahead and look at see what has changed in any of these you'll notice these have been touched but it doesn't look like they had any change that one either here we can see that it made a change to initialize it with an empty array, which is the new collection syntax. Uh, and get rid of this because it's duplicative, right? We're already specifying what it is here. We're going to go ahead and just initialize it as a new address. And here, this was a format of the document. So we actually got a change here by adding that space. And we can see that's happening again where we can use that collector. And the same problem with the collector, right? And so the reality of what's happening here is it is going to take all of those settings and try to apply them. Let's go back to the project and let's set up that second analysis. And I just want to do some things that I might not do as often. So apply namespace preferences. So this will switch the namespaces to what I've chosen, which is file scoped. And I'm going to add a couple of others here. Remove any imports and usings. Really wish this were searchable because it's a little hard to get that. Here it is. Fix all warnings and errors in editor config. And so if there's any things in the editor config that are producing errors or warnings, it'll fix those as well. And I'm also going to add string interpolation preferences. So this is whether you force people to use the dollar sign interpolation or change it when it's doing a simple addition to be more consistent. So let's go ahead and say OK. And now that we're asking it to do some actual more stuff, go ahead and run that second profile. This can take 10 minutes, 15 minutes on a really large project. The original things that we did fix ups were really quick and easy fix ups. For these doing that code cleanup, it's doing a lot more work to search and replace those. So a few more files got affected, but let's take a look. So our usings had a using that we actually weren't using in the project. So we had it remove that. And you're going to see that's going to be the case for some of these. 
And so we can see that a lot of changes have been made here. Let's go back to our get changes and let's explore these. So let's start from the bottom. That was the same collection. In this case, it changed the namespace to a file scope. Same here with the file scope, more spacing issues. We can see it cleaned up our namespaces here as well. Took a couple away that we weren't actually using. And even this usings file, that global usings that a lot of projects have, it's actually looked at this and got rid of one that we're not actually using. We're only using these subdomains, not the top level domain. So it removed it. Again, in a large project, this can be pages long and this could really clean it up and it will sort it as well. These are a little hard to say because they were already sorted. It allows us to take a big code base and figure out how we want it to look. One more thing I'm going to show you to go back here and let's configure it again and let's add to this one apply file header preferences this one I find interesting because remember we set this up we go ahead and run this and in this case virtually every file is going to end up being changed because we're going to apply this header to every file in our project now we see everything has changed right every single file because we now have that header in absolutely every place make sense so where does that take us? Code quality is something that a lot of us are trying to achieve. A lot of times you're doing that with things like code coverage, unit tests, integration tests. You wanna make sure that the kind of code you're writing, you don't have extra stuff in there that you're not actually using. This is another piece of that, and that's actually code analysis. And by using things like the editor config and preference settings inside of Visual Studio, you can really run these operations across large.NET projects and bring things into the same cohesive sense. Now this is the same as some JavaScript projects where you can use a straight up linter to throw warnings if they don't have certain things that can happen during the build. The editor config can be set up purely to go ahead and throw warnings or even errors for egregious violations in the way you want to do things. At the end of the day, I don't think it's super, super important to worry about different developers doing things in, in subtle different ways. Like I'm not a big fan of worrying about tabs versus spaces or much an intention is. When it comes to the cohesiveness of variable naming, file headers, so that we are starting to look at code that looks like it all belongs together. Code cleanup can really get you there pretty quickly. Make sense? Thanks for coming. I'll see you next time on Coding Shorts.